So I started on this project back in March, maybe, uh, when we first watched this uh, Normal People episode that had this song from Imogen Heap on it. And uh, I was kind of hoping to have the song done, you know, like in a weekend, but it's been like six months, uh, which is just a good lesson in humility for me about how little I know about modern audio tools. Uh, anyway, I really don't want to bore folks, but I thought I would make this explainer video, just trying to talk a little bit about what I did. I hope it's interesting in some regard. Uh, otherwise, you can just skip ahead to the song or just skip entirely. So here's a scene from Normal People. So there's something about that music played to that scene that interested me. Um, I thought it was, you know, she has a beautiful voice, Imogen Heap, and then it was paired with this very robotic, computer-like uh, accompaniment, which I was, you know, kind of tweaked my interest, and I looked it up, and it turns out that the uh, song is made with this old pitch shifter made by Digitech that she was using in the studio, and it uses a synthesis technique called linear predictive coding, uh, which I'd actually used back in like 1991 uh, when I was doing computer music at Columbia. And uh, that software was used by this, uh, or had been written by this guy at Princeton named Paul Lansky, who Imogen Heap had listened to. He has a, uh, a piece called Small Talk that she had listened to, I think, which inspired her uh, to write this or to use this effect in uh, uh, hide and seek. So it was an interesting connection there. So then one of the first places it was used in popular culture was this episode of the OC where these two guys are fighting. Uh, this woman comes in to break up the fight, has to do something tragic. It goes like this. And then Saturday Night Live did a parody of that that looks like this. Crazy. I, uh, I haven't seen her in years. It's, uh, it's weird because. What you say? Oh, that you only meant well, well, cause you did. What you say? Oh, that you only meant well, well, cause you did. So in 2009, Jason Derulo sampled her song for his What You Say track. And uh, maybe that was where you know the song from, or at least your kids do uh, know it. It was a big middle school song for my daughter. And um, I wasn't crazy about what he did with it. He cranked up the pitch, made her sound like a chipmunk. And uh, I, I felt like he, he took what was Imogene Heap's very personal song about something that was very hurtful to her or the person she's writing about in the song and he said it to this you know kind of sleazy song about him feeling maybe a little bit bad about sleeping around on his girlfriend so by this time you can see the song had uh, taken a good beating up in popular culture and so what was interesting is that i you know i didn't get the sense that imaging he had uh uh you know was offended by it i think Seems like she rolled with it in terms of its use and certainly it made the song more popular and it's certainly been probably one of her most popular songs. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, I guess there was something about it. I felt like the song deserved a little bit more than how it had been treated. And so I said about um, taking the vocal track and then creating an accompaniment for it with instruments. And uh, one of the ideas I had was to try to use instruments that were generally acoustic. So piano, um, there are two cellos in the mix and then drums that were relatively acoustic because um, I thought it would be neat to write it in a way where the arrangement could be played live. So that was the basic gist. So there are two versions that I use for the song. There's the original version that she did back in 2005. It's the one you probably know. It sounds like this. And this version, she sings, uh, she does it live where she sings uh, and then plays a portable keyboard which controls this kind of voice pitch shifter which uses this kind of old technique of doing pitch shifting that I knew from my days when I was studying electronic music at uh, Columbia. This guy uh, Paul Lansky at Princeton had maybe popularized it and then he wrote a piece um, 
called Small Talk, which used it. Uh, it's uh, also the technique, I think, used on the Speak and Spell, if you ever had one of those toys. So it has a weird robotic sound to it. So the other version of the song, I'll just go back here, uh, is from her version she did for Tibet, and that one sounds like this. Where we so it's pretty much just her a cappella with this drum sound behind it. And depending on the parts of the song, this version of worked a lot better for me because I just wanted the, the, the soul vocal. So the Tibet version has a drone sound in it that I wanted to get rid of. Here's how it sounds uh, normally. Spin me round so then I use this tool called Spleeder to remove it, and that version sounds like this. Which is really remarkably good. Uh, you hear a little bit of artifacts, but when you mix it, I don't hear the artifacts anymore. So the Splitter project is one where they taught a machine learning algorithm what vocals and guitar and bass, uh, I think piano, sounded like. And then uh, you give it a two-channel track of audio, and it tries to break the parts out into separate audio tracks, which, you know, just a few years ago, we would have thought impossible to do. So what I did was basically simple. I took a voice-only recording of Hide and Seek, and the original is just her voice with the synthesized um, pitch transpose voices that she plays and controls with the keyboard live. Uh, or I took the version from the Tibet song, which was just her solo voice with the drone sound. And then of course I used that splitter application to take the drone out. So all you have is her voice. This is what it sounds like. Her original version of the song is this. Spin me round again. And this is the version I used. If I just play you the music uh, background that I did, I, this is just the music I wrote around the voice. And here's the voice added. So before I play the song, uh, I thought I pointed a couple things uh, to listen for if you're interested. Um, one is uh, I use the strings as like a kind of reverberation to the piano a lot, or I fit the strings in behind the sound of the piano. And I'll play an example of that here. Uh, this is the beginning where the piano is going to play some chords and then listen very carefully. And uh, as the chords die away, you'll hear the strings come in. And then I do the same thing uh, later on here. So then if I put that all together with the drums, it sounds like this. And at the end of the song, I bring that same combination of strings and piano. So let's hear the song. I'm going to leave it in uh, the Ableton mode where you can kind of see some of the parts happening. So you've got something to look at. Hope you enjoy it.
You don't care a bit. You don't care a bit.